Just days after Michigan lifted all pandemic restrictions, Golan View GMC hosted a car cruise benefiting a local nonprofit organization. Orion Township invited members of the community to provide input as they revisit the township's master plan. The community came together to construct a concession stand at Miracle Field in Friendship Park. Rain or shine, the fireworks show still went on in Lake Orion this past weekend. Stay tuned for a recap coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of Owen TV News. The Lions Club Jubilee is a long time Lake Orion tradition that brings visitors from all over into the downtown area. Our own Lauren Creighton was there on Thursday evening as things kicked off in the village. Thanks Stacy. It's not officially summertime here in Lake Orion until the Lions Club Jubilee begins. I'm standing downtown in Lake Orion right now where the annual event kicked off today. And let me tell you, everyone around me is really enjoying the festivities. The Lions Club Jubilee has been a tradition here in Lake Orion since 1976. The event moved to Canterbury Village in 2009 due to construction before returning to downtown Lake Orion in 2014. Lions Club President Mike Pekelis was very pleased with the large turnout on just day one. After all, the Jubilee is incredibly important to his organization. This is one of our biggest single fundraisers that we put on all year long. Uh, I think a lot of people know what the Lions do for the community with eyeglasses, uh, scholarships for kids, hearing aids, there's all kinds of things that the Lions do and this is a big part of the fundraising that gives us the funds to do that. This is one of uh, many uh, getting back to normal um, events and milestones that we have. Um, we're very glad that Lions Club Jubilee has decided to come back to downtown. It is nice to see all of these people um, coming out here to have a good time. The Jubilee's grand return was welcomed by an abundance of rides, carnival games, and more courtesy of Skirbeck Entertainment Group. One of the new activities this year included a cornhole competition on Thursday. Next year we're planning on bringing Beer Tent back. I know everybody's uh, wondering about that. We couldn't do it this year because of the restrictions at the time. We start planning in January. But we got the carnival, we got a great fireworks show Saturday night. We've got a lot of things going on Friday and Saturday night. We've got our Project Kids site for eye screening for kids. We've got a vaccine uh, pop-up booth. We've got leader dog collections. We've got the VFW is selling water. So we've got a lot of things. We've got the high school robotics team coming out Saturday afternoon. So there's a lot to do down here. The highlight of the weekend was a fireworks show over Lake Orion, courtesy of Ace Pyro. The show was almost postponed due to rain, but the forecast improved and the show continued with only a slight delay. It ran approximately 20 minutes and ended with a spectacular finale. Jubilee, a reunion for Lake Orion community members. It's a celebration of life returning back to normal once again. Sitting at the top of the Ferris wheel for Owen TV News, I'm Lauren Creighton. Thanks, Lauren. Looks like you had a great time. There was quite a bit going on that same night. While the Jubilee was getting underway, Gollum Buick GMC was hosting a car cruise just down the road. Owen TV's Joe Johnson has the story. On Thursday, June 24th, Gowling Buick GMC held its second car cruise of the season. Gray skies may have affected attendance, but the rain held off, and approximately 100 classic car owners came out to enjoy the first car show held since Michigan lifted all COVID restrictions. It's phenomenal. It's great. Um, there's a certain um, relief um, 
we feel like we got our liberty back and we're, we're um, back in business. I was personally thinking that as people got back out that we would still be fist pumping and elbow bumping and doing all that craziness, but people are really eager to shake hands and even give a little embrace. Um, and, and you're right, they're just happy to be out. It's almost like going through a long winter that lasted 15 months and finally the sun broke through and everybody's happy to be out here, so it's, it's great. Each Gowling Car Cruise benefits a local nonprofit organization. Representatives of Orion Area Youth Assistance were on hand to sell burgers and dogs. They also benefited from a 50-50 raffle and Car Cruise participants were encouraged to make a $10 donation to the organization. We've been doing this for three or four years with Youth Assistance. Uh, the last few years they've done our big show. We like to change it around so it's going to be different. Youth Assistance is out here. Uh, we at Gowling's donate the food, we donate everything. The youth assistance uh, does not have to pay for a thing, so it's all profit for them. They can take the money and do what they are gonna do with it. I know a lot of times, because I'm on the youth assistance board, a lot of this will go to scholarships uh, for the summer camps. This year, it's better than last year for summer camps, so we've got some more kids that are needy, but we're looking for more kids for camps, and, and that's what this is all about. The next car cruise is scheduled to take place on Saturday, July 31st in downtown Lake Orion. The event will benefit the police department's Kids and Cops program. There are two cruises scheduled in August at Friendship Park, and the final super cruise will take place on September 8th back here at Gowling Buick GMC. In Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. Orion area families had plenty of family-friendly events to choose from on Thursday. In addition to the Jubilee and the car cruise, a fun event returned to the grounds of the Orion Center. ONTV's Amanda Porton reports from Orion Township Summer Sizzle. On the evening of Thursday, June 24th, Orion Township held their annual Summer Sizzle event at the Orion Center. Originating in 2009, Summer Sizzle has grown into an annual event for the community to look forward to. This year's guests were able to enjoy carnival games, hot and candy, snow cones, hot dogs and chips, bounce houses, live music from Guy Lewis and the Chautauqua Express, and more. So this event started a handful of years ago with our supervisor, Matthew Gibbs. Um, we wanted to do a give back to the community because we were in a really tight, bad time back in 2007, 2008. And this was our come back out and let's be Orient Township, let's be strong. So that's how it started, and it's gotten bigger and better every year. This event kind of grew very quickly, and it kind of grew out of our budget bounds. Um, and this was before the millage, so this was in a different time frame. And First Baptist Church was so committed to this program that they actually stepped up and volunteered to help us with some of the expenses. And they still do that to this day. For probably the last 16, 17 years, um, whether it was Summer Sizzle or some of the other Orion Township Parks and Rec events, um, we've had a relationship with uh, Township where our teenagers have helped run some of the kids' games or just been general volunteers. And then as the events themselves have shifted and morphed into either different locations or different styles, we've stayed with it. And I think about probably five or six years ago, this event, Summer Sizzle, used to be run out at Civic Center Park, and the township used to do most of it. Our kids would just do the games. But then we partnered up, and we have started providing all of the food stuff and manning all of that, as well as the kids helping with the kids' game, the teenagers. And so we do the snow cone, cotton candy, popcorn, hot dogs, chips, and just try to do what we can to be a blessing to the community. The event was made possible thanks to the generosity of many community sponsors. After its cancellation in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I asked Jennifer Vesna how it felt to have the popular event return to the Orient Center. Yeah, we obviously canceled it last year. The event did not happen. We just could not see this kind of event happening in that atmosphere. So planning it this year, we really saw one of two things happening. Either nobody was gonna come because people were still reluctant to come out or everybody was going to come out because they're ready to be out and it really looks like people are ready to be out because here we are on an evening that does not look very nice it's humid it's sticky the sky is not wonderful 
And here we are with hundreds of people from our community. The next major event is the Big Rig Gig, taking place on August 6th at Friendship Park from 5 to 9 p.m. The event is free to the public. Until then, you can enjoy the free concerts at the Wildwood Amphitheater. Concerts are every Tuesday night until the middle of August. For more information, you can go to orionparks.com. From the Orion Center for ONTV News, I'm Amanda Porter. Thanks, Amanda. The term master plan sounds fairly rigid and permanent, but that's not necessarily the case. Orion Township and its Planning Commission are currently revisiting the township's master plan, and they're seeking your input. On Wednesday, June 16th, Orion Township residents were invited to attend an open house at the Orion Center to offer input on the township's master plan. Several stations were set up allowing visitors to gather information on community demographics, land use, transportation, housing, and natural features. The Planning Commission is in the process of updating the master plan, which is required by state law to take place every five years. So before they did that, they wanted to get input from the public. And this open house is an opportunity to share mainly existing conditions information uh, and, and some concepts with, with the public and get their thoughts. Um, how are things going? What do they think about recent development? What do they think about the existing long-range master plan? Um, how do they feel about uh, non-motorized transportation such as bikes, bikeways, bike paths, sidewalks? Would you like to see more of them? Would you like to only see them in certain areas? Are there locations that are missing that we really need to see? Uh, so there's a, there's a wealth of, of questions that um, the Planning Commission is looking to get input on, and it ranges from various land use questions to transportation questions to also natural resources questions about the importance of woodlands, wetlands, uh, sustainable development and the like. So it's a, it's a pretty comprehensive overview, and the Township Planning Commission really wants uh, input from the public at this point. Members of the Planning Commission were on hand to answer questions. Visitors were also asked to rank projects they would like to see money spent on. After this, the Planning Commission will be um, working at, at its, typically at its second meeting of the month, the Planning Commission has been really focusing on the master plan because they meet twice a month. But the second meeting of the month has been, has been the real master plan focused study sessions. And so they're going to be actually looking at the land use plan map, looking at the non-motorized recommendations and starting to develop the plan itself and what those recommendations will be. And the, um, the goal is that uh, by late fall, there will be a draft and once those concepts are developed, the Planning Commission is going to have another open house and seek more public input so that then they can hear what the public thinks of the work that they've done. If you miss the open house, it's not too late to get involved. Visit OrionTownship.org and click on the 2021 Master Plan Update link. Miracle Field celebrated opening day in August of 2019, giving those with special needs a barrier-free space to play ball. Since then, many athletes have enjoyed the features of the field, but one thing was missing. On Thursday, June 3rd, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett met with a group of volunteers from Cunningham Lemp to begin building the new concession stand at Miracle Field located at Friendship Park. After its opening in August of 2019, construction on the concession stand was supposed to follow. However, due to the pandemic, it was delayed. But thanks to the generosity of the public, the plan is finally back in motion awesomeness is happening behind me right now. So we have an amazing group of volunteers from uh, Cunningham Limp and some township employees. And we're building the concession stand out here at the Miracle League field. So uh, it won't only just be a concession stand, it'll be bathrooms, handicap accessible bathrooms, uh, some storage for some equipment for the league. Uh, and we're really excited about it. And we've been raising money for this for a long time. Uh, the field we're on, you know, we raised almost half a million dollars to build this field. And this is kind of the final part of the dream out here is to build this concession stand. We have an amazing partnership with Easter Seals Michigan. So um, they're a great partner, uh, local nonprofit, actually they're a statewide nonprofit uh, that serve adults and young people with special needs. And uh, we literally had hundreds of community members donate uh, to the field to make this happen. So uh, it's a really cool thing. I mean. Pretty much everything here has been donated. Uh, very, very, uh, with very small contribution from the township, but uh, most of this has been just the community coming together and supporting this dream and this vision that we've had here. Everyone here today is volunteering their time. Uh, so we have a few township employees, but the bulk of the volunteers out here today are the team from Cunningham Limp. Uh, they're the construction company that's building our new township hall and police station. Uh, and they just, uh, they partnered with us from the beginning, helping us build the field. 
and they're all out here volunteering their time, not charging the township or Easter Seals anything to be here. Uh, their time and expertise, uh, we're learning a lot. So this is a continuation of uh, something that our company got engaged in um, probably about three years ago with our involvement with the Miracle Field. And as we were putting together the master plan, Cunningham Limp, uh, really saw the vision immediately. Our company, uh, we specialize in building better communities and every year annually we take on a community impact project. Uh, this project uh, has a lifespan of three years. So uh, from our company, we saw the, the vision immediately, uh, knew that it was an easy answer, that we wanted to be a part of this any way we can, uh, just, just to know that uh, the athletes um, who, who will benefit from this, uh, that's why we're doing it. It's, it's our opportunity to give back. Our company uh, really all oversaw uh, the construction management aspect, partnered with uh, Auger Klein Aller, who's the architect, uh, OHM, who was the engineer uh, that did all of the design work to place the field, uh, working with the comprehensive team to really put it together, and uh, a bunch of just great uh, subcontractors and vendors who have donated time, talents, and, and efforts to, to really make this happen. One of the cool things about the concession stand is that we're going to employ uh, people with special needs. So we're going to help give job opportunities and teach people. Um, job skills here in this building which is remarkable uh, and it's not it's not going to just serve this the miracle field it's going to serve the cluster of fields behind here uh, and the soccer fields the whole park so uh, it's it's going to be a state-of-the-art concession stand and again the cool piece about it is that we're going to be able to teach um, young people with special needs uh, job skills they'll be able to work here we're told work on the concession stand should be completed soon and with hopes of opening it to the public sometime in august Orion Township held its first car bingo event back in December as part of its 12 weeks of snowcation activities. It was so popular, car bingo returned to the Orion Center once again. On Tuesday, June 22nd, over 100 cars filled the parking lot of the Orion Center to take part in car bingo. The activity began as a safe and fun event for families during the COVID pandemic. It returned in March with a great turnout forcing organizers to plan another one in June. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think every time we did it, more and more people were like, let's do another and one, let's do another one. So I thought, yeah, three. spring break was going to be the last one, knowing that the summer would bring more freedom for restrictions, and right, um, they wanted going. it. So we offered it, and we got over 100 people again, so <laughs> yeah. it's very popular. Next Celebrity bingo callers Dave Raftery and Jenny Body of Orion Township announced the numbers as participants listened through their car radios. Winners were encouraged to declare bingo by beeping their horns and flashing their lights. Prizes were donated by several local sponsors. Today our sponsors were Swirls and Hap, so um, for the regular bingos, Hap is giving away some goodies and then uh, for the special bingos, Swirls is doing a free ice cream. We also have some free open swim with goldfish and then the grand prize is $80 to Swirls right there on Baldwin, so good prizes. Due to the popularity of the event, organizers believe they will continue car bingo in the near future. For more information, visit orionparks.com. The Orion Township Public Library has evolved into a community resource that's so much more than a place to check out books. Recently, the library organized an event for families looking to take part in a fun summertime activity. So the crew's going to tell you where to go to the next destination. It's not how fast you consult them. Multiple groups of families sure and friends gathered at the library on Saturday, so June 19th to compete in the first ever Orion Community Road Rally. Library assistant James Pugh organized the event along with help from the community. I really wanted to get people away from the computer screens because we were doing a lot of virtual programming and to get people out and about. And we had a lot of organizations come together. Uh, we had Parks and Rec, DDA, um, you guys on TV. We had the Orion Arts Center and we had um, the Lake Orion Schools. Um, and they all chipped in and we've put together this community-wide program that I hope community members will uh, enjoy. There was a total of 16 groups that took part in the event. Teams raced throughout the community to find clues and earn bonus points while performing various activities. They began at the Orion Library before moving on to spots like the Orion Art Center, Children's Park, Jesse Decker Park, and the Lake Orion High School football field. I'm very, very happy with the response. I'm glad that a lot of uh, people um, wanted to do this. I'm glad that we had a lot of groups come together, and I'm glad that a lot of organizations came together too and helped us out with this program. It was like a little bit challenging, but not too challenging. And I don't know, we just got to drive around and have fun. Teams finished up at the Orient Center where the final points were then tallied up. 
The first place Stabenow family won $75 in downtown dollars and a $25 gas card. The second place team won $50 downtown dollars and a car wash at Mr. C's. And the third place team came away with $25 downtown dollars along with a free night of camping at Camp Agawam. Downtown dollars can be used at any location in downtown Lake Orion. One week earlier, the library hosted an event that encourages students to keep reading long after the school year has come to an end. On Saturday, June 12th, the Orion Township Library invited area families to take part in their summer reading program kickoff. Although slightly more low-key than in past years, families who came out to the library enjoyed a program on birds of prey by the Howell Nature Center. Throughout the day, teens took part in an escape room. Naturist Andrew Nowicki presented tales of wildlife, and the library even kicked off a week-long scavenger hunt. So here we are at a lower scale version of our summer reading kickoff. So we're just trying to get people back out in the community a little bit. So we had the Howell Nature Center here to do a little presentation about owls. Um, our summer reading program this year is Tales and Tales is the theme. So lots of things about story tales and tales of animals. And so that's kind of where our theme's going. Um, so these folks listen to a little presentation. Right now they're dissecting owl pellets, which is really fascinating to me. So. Um, but it's a chance to just kind of give everybody the information about summer reading for the year, give out some of the handouts. We're not doing anything online this year, so it's all paper. And so paper and stickers and stamps and things like that, just to kind of give people a break from the computer screens. Youths, teens, and even adults are encouraged to read books throughout the summer and keep a log. The program comes to an end on August 7th, and the library is planning on having a big celebration on that date. Yeah, so everything ends, I believe it's August 7th, is that Saturday, and we're actually hoping to do kind of our bigger party celebration time at that point. So we'll have another presenter out um, and hopefully have a lot of fun, maybe even have some food and, and other activities for kids at that time. If you miss the kickoff, it's not too late to get involved. You can either visit the library for the needed materials or you can go to orionlibrary.org slash summer reading for more information. A popular summer pastime is to visit garage sales in the Orion area. The only downside is the cost of gas as you travel from house to house. Recently, Orion Township hosted one large garage sale that offered one-stop shopping. On a sunny Saturday, June 5th, bargain hunters visited the parking lot of the Orion Center for Orion Township's outdoor community garage sale. Vendors offered a wide variety of clothing, home decor, knickknacks, and more from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The mobile shredding company Shredded arrived at the event for those looking to properly dispose of sensitive documents. This service, along with parking and admission, was free to visitors. It's good to be outside. It's nice to see people getting outdoors um, and getting back to normal life. We had a fabulous turnout. The garage sale sells out every year. It sells out very quickly, so it is sold out. We had shoppers here trying to shop as early as 8.30 this morning when the sale started at 9. So that was a little confusing for us to be parking cars and having people shopping at the same time, but it's all about finding a good deal. While that was going on outside, 15 vendors sold collectibles during the Antique Comic and Toy Expo inside the Orient Center. Vendors were happy with the turnout thanks to a sunny summer day and people eager to take part in community events once again. And finally, with pandemic restrictions lifted, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce can get back to welcoming new businesses and helping existing businesses celebrate milestones. On Thursday, June 17th, the Orion Area Chamber and Lake Orion DDA gathered in the downtown area for the belated grand opening of Lowe's Beauty Bar and Med Spa. All right, one, two, three. Lowe's Beauty Bar was forced to postpone their grand opening for over a year due to the pandemic shutdown, but as they say, better late than never. It was a little rough. It was a little scary, I think, in the beginning. We didn't know what to expect, but um, we planned, we saved, we made sure that, you know, we were ready to go no matter what. So luckily we were very fortunate. Um, we were closed for a few months, got to reopen in June, and since then we've been very, very busy. So we're very grateful for that. We definitely have a broad range of services. So we do eyelash extensions. We do lots of bridal parties, hair and makeup. We also do full hair services. So color, cut, styles, massage therapy, medical spa treatments. We do laser treatments, cool sculpting, microneedling, um, injections and fillers, um, aesthetics, so skincare, facials, chemical peels, waxing. So a little bit of everything. For more information on the services they offer, you can call Lowe's at 248 690 9907 
or visit Lowe's Beauty Bar and MedSpa.com. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of o and News. On behalf of the hardworking o and News team, I'm Cynthia Calloway. Thanks for watching.